Hey there, I'm Jason Zwalik of the Zwalik Group with First Team and Christie's International Real Estate. Thanks so much for checking out this video. If you're new to the channel, each week I discuss different real estate topics all in the hopes of helping you navigate the world of home buying, selling, and investing. I've always said one of the best ways to build both passive income and generational wealth is through real estate. If you're thinking of buying an investment property, there are a lot of terms you will want to familiarize yourself with. In this video, I'm going to talk about three terms you will want to know as you start your real estate portfolio. The first term is net operating income or NOI. NOI is the sum of the property's income streams minus the sum of the property's expenses. In order to add up the property's income streams, you can include any form of income it can produce, such as rental income, fees, and on-site amenities that require additional funds, such as laundry. For example, let's say you're considering a property that brings in $3,500 a month in rental income and with no additional income streams available. That will give you $42,000 a year in gross rental income, and that's before expenses. Now, you'll add up the property's expenses. The obvious expenses to include are property taxes, insurance premiums, repairs, and legal costs. However, there are less obvious expenses that should also be included, such as potential vacancies. You will want to do some research in your local market to determine an accurate estimate for the property's expected vacancy rate. For our example, let's say the total expenses are $900 a month, which includes a 10% vacancy expectation. Now that we have the property's income and expenses, we simply subtract the costs from the income and multiply by 12. This will give us our net operating income. In our example, the net operating income for the property is $2,600 per month or $31,200 per year. The second term we're going to look at is capitalization rate or cap rate. The cap rate of a property is determined based on the potential revenue and the risk level as compared to other properties. Remember though, the cap rate will not provide a total return on investment. Instead, it will give an estimate of how long it will take to recover the initial investment in the property. As a general rule, the formula used will determine a higher cap rate for properties that have a higher net operating income and lower valuation. The properties with a lower net operating income and higher valuation will have a lower cap rate. Let's go back to our example to determine the cap rate for our potential property. We know the net operating income is $31,200. Let's say the asking price is $500,000 and is at market value. To find the cap rate, we simply divide the net operating income by the market value. In our example, we would divide $31,200 by $500,000, giving us 0 0.0624. We then multiply this by 100 to get our cap rate of 6.24. Investors can view properties with a lower cap rate as less risky, but they should expect a longer time frame to recoup their initial investment. As an investor, you should take some time to consider what an acceptable cap rate is for properties in your portfolio. With a number in mind, you can quickly pass on properties that don't meet your risk tolerance. It's also important to realize that cap rates fluctuate across the country and other factors can affect the cap rate. These include location. As with all things in real estate, the location of a property can have a big impact on cap rates. A riskier location will often accompany a higher cap rate. Market size. A large competitive market may have lower cap rates than a smaller market where there is more risk involved. Asset stability. The projected stability of the property value can come into play. Potential for growth. A property with a lot of potential in growing in a growing market could see an affected cap rate. Capital liquidity. The amount of capital you put into the property will have a big impact on the cap rate because that will directly impact your NOI. The final term is gross rent multiplier or the GRM. The GRM is important to real estate investors because of its speed and utility. The formula uses two variables, rental property value and gross property income. There are several formulas in real estate investing, but almost none are as simple as the GRM. Investors typically have access to both numbers and can easily perform this calculation. The GRM can be quite an effective tool as it allows users to easily compare potential investments. Calculating the GRM is simple. You take the market value of a property and divide it by the property's gross rental income. In our example, the market value of the property was $500,000. 
divided by the gross rental income, which is $42,000, this gives us a gross rent multiplier of 11.9. Keep in mind that the GRM is used to compare potential income between properties. It can't predict how long a specific loan will take to pay off, which property will have fewer expenses, or the amount of debt associated with purchasing a given property. Each of these factors will need to be considered during a more thorough property analysis. A good gross rent multiplier in real estate is typically one of the smaller numbers within your range because a lower GRM generally suggests more rental income in relation to the purchase price. There are many more terms to know, but with these three, you can begin looking for the right investment property for you. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so you're notified every time I post. If you have any questions, send them to me directly or write them down in the comments below and I'll make sure to answer them as I'm here to help in any way that I can. I hope you all have a great rest of your week and until next time, take care everybody.